Switching gears here, Fed Chair Jay Powell out with some comments this morning on why it will continue to take a hawkish tone on inflation. This from a speech at Sweden's Risk Bank today. Take a listen. Price stability is the bedrock of a healthy economy and provides the public with immeasurable benefits over time. But restoring price stability when inflation is high can require measures that are not popular in the short term as we raise interest rates to slow the economy. So joining us now for more, let's bring in Neil Berger, who is Eagles View Capital Management founder, president and CIO. Neil, great to have you here with us this morning. In your notes, you actually said that the world is seeing a unicorn for the first time in 40 years. Help us break that down as you've got central banks really undergoing this balance sheet normalization, as you call it. Sure. Thank you for having me and, and good morning. Um, you know, uh, inflation uh, has been talked about uh, certainly during my career, um, which spans 33 years uh, in the investment business as, as both a trader and a hedge fund allocator. But um, I have actually never seen uh, inflation. I know that it existed uh, 40 years ago, but I think for the generation that is investing today, um, it's somewhat of a unicorn in the sense that we've heard about this thing that exists called inflation, but we've never actually seen it in, in practice. And now we're actually seeing it, um, uh, you know, come to the fore around the globe, not just in the U.S. And, uh, you know, I, I believe that it's a uh, it's an artifact of the massive liquidity infusion, the central bank's posture towards liquidity by injecting twenty five trillion dollars into the system uh, initially since the global financial crisis and then more recently in response to the covid pandemic. And it's created a collateral effect initially of uh, massive asset price inflation and then more recently the secondary collateral effect being consumer price inflation. So um, we're seeing it. Uh, it's debatable about whether it's, you know, seven percent, six percent, five percent. But the the reality is it's, it's, it's much higher than uh, it had been during my trading lifetime. And um, and, you know, uh, we'll see how that ends up playing out. We will see how it ends up playing out. Uh, Neil, one of the reasons we're talking to you is because your fund that you launched in April 2021 reportedly went up some 163 percent last year. What you're describing now in hindsight seems like the consensus view. It wasn't always, of course, over the course of the last year. What do you okay. think that investors are still not getting about this big shift that we have seen? Well, I think that <clears throat> one has to, <clears throat> um, I, I think number one, investors are possibly missing a bit of the forest through the trees in that we are in the midst of a major bear market in all asset prices. So to me, the price action is the Bible. If anybody pulls out a chart of the S&P 500 or you know bond prices or the prices of crypto, or for that matter, the prices of rare watches, you know whatever one wants to point to, they're all essentially in a 45 degree angle to the downside for the past year. So I, I think there needs to be a recognition that um, that we are in this uh, bear market and um, the price action is dictating that. Now, um, you know, I think that uh, the reason for that and, and the fundamental thesis as to why I started the fund was that the, um, the we you have to one has to believe that we were where we were a couple of years ago. Um, whether it be private equity valuations, public equity valuations, uh, sovereign $19 trillion of sovereign debt trading at negative nominal interest rates, um, you know, and all the, you know, COVID pandemic economic activity screeches to a halt the, and the S&P skyrockets like a rocket ship. I mean, these just aren't normal conditions in any universe that I'm aware of. Um, and, and to me, this is all a result and a collateral effect of the massive liquidity infusion by the central banks, which created a tailwind towards asset prices. And now that central banks are changed their posture 180 degrees towards from going from liquidity infusion to liquidity extraction, that provides a headwind against asset prices in the same way it provided a tailwind for so many years prior. Neil, yeah, so do you think this bear market could last another five years? Anything is possible. Um, you know, I'm not in the prediction business. I'm in the observation business. Um, you know, I'm going to follow market price action. And, uh, you know, I never would have imagined the bull market would have lasted as long as it lasted or, or had gone as, as far as it had gone. But, um, you know, as long as the the price action of the markets continues to to suggest that markets are going down. Um, I'm going to have to continue to play it that way. And if the market tells me differently, then then I'm going to act accordingly. Um, I am not, uh, you know, I'm not in the uh, being right business. I'm in the money making business. That's what my investors task me with. And and so um, I'm trying to avoid 
um, you know, predicting where the world is going and just observing. And if the market changes, I'll have to change. But the market's done nothing wrong, uh, nothing right at this moment, as far as I'm concerned. So in as much as you can tell us, Neil, how are you making the money? How do you, you know, if we're in the midst of this bear market, which we clearly are, given what we've seen over the last year, how do you make money in that environment? So, um, you know, I, I, I'm uh, short the market. I'm short the S&P 500. I'm short 10-year notes. I'm short uh, Bund futures. I'm short uh, the Euro stocks. I'm short the JGBs. So I'm actively trading because I've been a trader for 33 years, uh, trading from the short side. My uh, vehicle of choice happens to be futures. Uh, it's extremely liquid, extremely deep. Um, I can move around the positions very well. So I'm trading a center book where I'm trading from the short side uh, in these major market indices, uh, global stocks and bonds. And that's how I've been able to um, create the returns that I've been able to create. Neil Berger, Eagles View, Capital Management Founder, President and CIO. Thanks for coming on Yahoo Finance. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me.